Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're talking about my blue and green eyeshadows. I have palettes, I have singles, I have liquid, I have powder, I have a bit of everything. And I have a, a wide range of light to dark, matte, satin, glimmer, shimmer, I have everything, honestly. So we're gonna do a swatch party, we're gonna do some comparisons and just have some fun. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. All right, let me pull up my sleeves. As you can tell, I happen to like green and blue a lot. I just think that it's just fun. It's just fun sometimes to wear, you know, a butterfly or peacock inspired eyeshadow look obviously with a nude lip. So let's just go ahead and dive in. I'm not sure exactly what order I'm going to do. Maybe I'm gonna start with green because I definitely have more blue than green. We're gonna start with green. This first one here is from Armani Beauty and this is their liquid eyeshadow. This is number 37. So this is an emerald green and I like the Armani liquid shadows in general because they have a really nice wand applicator and you can't really tell right now, but in the center of the wand, it's actually hollow. It's not, I can't really show, it's filled in right now with product, but there's a little gap in the center, which means that you don't have a ton of product and if you want to do a winged liner with this or more of a cat eye makeup look it's super easy because the wand applicator is great so this is a liquid waterproof uh, eyeshadow here you can use it as liner as well but it's a very dark forest green now i do have some darker greens like the forest green and i like those but i i, I like to pair them with something else this one here I would say, does it have a matte finish? Yeah, it's like a nice creamy finish. When it dries down, it's more matte. It's not going to be as satiny as other ones here. This one here from Chantecai. This is the Tiger. This is the Luminescent Eye Shade in Regal Emerald, and it's Tiger. It has a tiger on the front here. Now, I do like this, but I find that it's a bit darker than I want. You know, when it comes to blue and green, I still like it to have a level of brightness. So, I mean, when it's compared to the Armani one, it definitely looks brighter. It has this reflective quality, so depending on the light, it catches a bit of gold, a bit of purple as well. And it does look bright compared to the Armani one, but something about when I wear it, it looks a bit darker. Like, I like this green from Chantecaille. I just like when a green or blue has a lot of lightness and what's the word, like brightness to it or just like an airy quality. And I, I think that this one here is really nice. I just think that they need to make it even brighter in a way. But I do love an eyeshadow that depending on the light looks like a different color because that way it looks like you're wearing four different eyeshadows when really you're just wearing one. And who doesn't want to do that? Like who, like who wants to put in more effort? If you can put in less, wonderful. So sticking to our dark forest green shadows. I have my Chanel, this is the blurry green. Now, the whole blurry series came out a few years ago. So for today's video, I'm just gonna swatch the greens of the palette. So if I show you a palette that has other colors, I'm just gonna swatch the green and the blue just for brevity. So I think there were two greens in here. One is like really dark and one's a lot lighter. It's hard to tell. It kind of looks like it's a brown here in the palette. Yeah, so it's so it's these two here. So this was more of a brown than anything else, to be honest, but it does work together. And this is one interesting, funky palette here. But I do like a dark khaki green, but I don't know, like I like it. I don't love it. Something about a dark khaki green on my color, my eyes, everything. I just find often makes me look tired. I just have to put in like so much concealer and something in the center here just to, or in the inner corner to brighten up because like, I like khakis, but I just think that there are better greens out there that just kind of lift your whole face and just, I don't know, give a bit of brightness because sometimes it's just too dark for me. But other people love khaki greens because it's a way of wearing green that isn't as flashy as what I'm wearing today, and I will get to this in a moment. So next up is the Chanel Les Beige palette. This is the Intense palette. Now, 
Yes, there is a khaki green in here. It is this one over here. So the Les Beige palettes from Chanel are definitely lighter and softer. The formulation, you know, it's for the typical Chanel client who's maybe more mature, has more mature eyelids, and wants something softer on the eyes. And this Les Beige Compact is really no exception here. So I'm just gonna swatch it on the side here. It honestly looks more brown than anything else. It looks like it could fit into the blurry green quad very easily. It just looks like it's part of that color story. So I like the intense palette from the Les Beige, but I, I typically use the other colors. I don't go into this one that much because yeah, it's just, you know, now that I've seen other greens that are brighter, I tend to go for those more. Now here is a blast from the past. This is the Chanel Très de Caractère eyeshadow palette from the holiday release from like what, 2017, 2016, something like that, 2015? I don't know, a while ago. And so this was a five shadow palette. They used to do these for the holidays. So I'm gonna swatch uh, this one here. Now this is a darker green but it had a bit of brightness if I remember correctly, but it's been a few years since I've worn it. So let's see if my memory is correct. Yes, this is definitely brighter. So when I want like a dark green, this is the type of shade that I want. It's dark, but it has a little bit more lightness to it. It's just not as like dark, brown, super heavy, smoky eye. It's a bit lighter. And this one here, I think was like a satin. Yeah, it's like a satin. It's not like a super hard matte. They don't really make this uh, five shadow palette anymore or this formula, but I like this one a lot. It was very nice, especially for the holidays. It was a nice, uh, nice palette to have. Moving on to NARS. This is the Climax Nine Shadow Palette. Now, I'm not a huge fan of nine shadow palettes normally, but this NARS eyeshadow formula is exquisite. And there are two colors in here. Well, actually there's two greens and a blue. Let's go ahead and swatch that. This one here is like a nice olivey green and NARS eyeshadow quality is definitely overlooked. It's really nice. It's super creamy, super opaque and very easy to use. All right, so this was the matte here. In the palette, it looks lighter. It looks like it's going to be like a light olive green. That's this one here, but you can tell it's much darker. It looks like um, the blurry green and what was this one here? The Le Beige color. It looks like it's going to mix up there. Honestly, I would buy this palette. It looks fun. It has a, a mix of matte and satin. These two here are way more shimmery. This is like um, almost like a bronze green where you see some gold and bronze reflection in it. And this blue, very pretty. I like that it has that reflective quality. It sort of catches the light. And yeah, NARS eyeshadows are not to be overlooked. I had to clean off my hand. Moving on to some Dior, and this palette here is new to me, it's not new, but it's really a palette that is phenomenal. So this is Jungle, and we're going to swatch, I guess, these two down here. This is a beautiful palette overall. I would recommend it 100%, not just for greens, but this is like a nice, intense matte green. And this one here is more like a yellowish green gold bronze shade. So here are the two colors. Now this shade is like this super intense, dark, olive, khaki, matte green that is like a green with brown. And then this shade here, I probably shouldn't have swatched it. It has nothing to do with today's color, uh, color story, but it is very pretty. And I love jungle. I wear the green, but honestly, I wear the other colors just as much. Just overall, green or jungle is a great palette to get. Now let's move on to maybe my Chanel 9 shadow palettes. Remember when these came out, when Lucia Pica first came on to Chanel, she came out with these jumbo 9 shadow palettes and these are very colorful. We have a blue and a green right in the center, smack in the middle. This is number one, a fresco. Love this. I really thought they would continue with this, but I was wrong. That was incorrect. So here we're treading into green and blue categories. Here we have them. I absolutely love this blue. When I think of a blue eyeshadow, this is usually what I mean. 
I want my eyes to look like turquoise aqua water. I want, you know when you look at the beach on the Caribbean and it's like that beautiful crystal turquoise water? That's what I want in an eyeshadow on my eyes, typically what I mean blue. So this is absolutely beautiful and the green is nice. It's light, it is a bit dark, but it's not like as dark as this. It has a bit of a shift. This was a great palette and I used those two a lot. And now this is number two. What was this one called? Uh, Quintessence, Quintessential. Another nine shadow palette here. This was a different color story. I mean, sort of similar, but she blocked like all matte, more shimmery, satiny. And these ones were really creamy and like almost like a cream to powder finish. But we're gonna go ahead and I guess swatch these three because this one here is technically like a super, super dark navy. And this was like a precursor to some other dark matte blue palettes from Chanel, also from Lucia Pica. So here are the three. And if we compare this super dark matte color, we can see that it does look more blue compared to this one here. Like when you see them in the palette, you might think those look very similar. No, you can see there is a subtle difference. It's like a super dark navy. And then this one here is super dark, but it has a bit of brightness. You know, I think it looks a bit closer to this one here than this one. And then this one here reminds me of the color from the NARS palette again. You know, it's like that mm, green with bronze in it. Remember, it was this one here in the center. It kind of looks like this one here. So just an interesting comparison here. And I'm glad to see that we're starting to get into the blues as well. All right, moving on to something from Clé de Peau. And this is something that I rarely see. I don't see that many people using the Clé de Peau eyeshadow palettes. There are a couple, but I think that they're hard to find for whatever reason. And this palette here is, well, this is just the refill. I didn't buy the actual case because you can just keep the box that it comes in. And this is 304 champagne supernova and in my opinion this is a absolutely gorgeous spring palette pastels for spring it's light it looks like a garden you know it's green with purple flowers that's what i see when i look at this and this one here is really hard to find for whatever reason but i'm gonna go ahead and swatch this green here because as you can tell i like green and this little palette here it's pretty shimmery i think this green is the only matte Everything else is satiny or shimmery in some, some, some way. So this is this sort of pastel. It's matte, but not that matte. It's satiny. It has a bit of reflection to it. It's very, very light. It's a pastel. And it looks very different than everything I've shown you so far. But sometimes I like having a color or a finish that's totally different because I do have an extensive collection. So. Sometimes just having something that's totally out there is fun to play with. Speaking of fun, out there, and very different, I have this other luminescent eye shade from Chantecai. This one is called Mare, which I believe means the sea, the ocean. And this, it looks like Positano. It was the Positano collection. And I have to say that I think that the luminescent eye shade formula is my favorite from the brand. As far as their eyeshadows go, I just love the formula. It's very extra. It's very satiny. This is what it looks like. It's this frosted mint seafoam green. It is literally what mermaid dreams are made of. And if you can tell, most of my eyeshadows, especially the greens and the blues, if they have any sort of like shimmer quality to them, I will douse whatever makeup brush I'm using in a setting spray because this intensifies the eyeshadow. It makes it more intense, more sparkly. The color intensifies the finish, everything. And I don't mind because yes, the little waves are destroyed, but I buy my makeup to wear it. And if it means I have to go in and dig around to get the finish that I want, I really don't mind. This is the shadow here. It's so pretty. It almost looks more blue. It gives me more of like a minty, like 1960s frosted look. Am I correct with a 1960s reference? Maybe it's more of a 90s reference, but oh, beautiful. I love it so much. It's very silky as well, and it just, oh, beautiful color. It almost looks white compared to everything else, but I promise you, when you're not comparing it to the more intense colors, it looks like a frosted mint seafoam 
beautiful color. So extra. Next up from Michelle Takai, this was the butterfly, butterfly, <laughs> what's a butterfly? I don't know, the butterfly eye quartet. And there was this color here. So this one here, it was like this pearlescent multi finish duochrome. It's sort of like a green with a yellow. It's one of those colors that has basically every color in the rainbow depending on the angle. So I'm going to put it in the green category because it does have some green reflection. See, depending on the angle here, sometimes it looks like it's matching my shirt, my turtleneck, but sometimes it looks very almost like translucent. So super fun. I definitely like this, but I like the luminescent eyeshadow quality more because it's just like more opaque, more intense. It is very pretty and listen, it's very eye-catching, but it's not as good as Mare. Ugh, Mare is my favorite. All right, let's move on to what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing two eyeshadows. It may look like I'm wearing 17. Actually, it's just two. And these are the Charlotte Tilbury Hypnotizing Pop Shots. So I am wearing Cosmic Rocks. That is this blue, purple, peacock color. And I basically put this everywhere. Like I went everywhere on the lid like this and a little bit on the crease and on the bottom lashes. Let's give you a swatch, although you can see it on my eyes. So depending on the angle, it's blue, it's purple, a bit of green. Listen, it's giving me everything that I want. This is an alley eyeshadow situation, 100%. And then in the inner part here, I went into emerald eyes. So this is a green, but it has a lightness. It's not like in the pan, it may look dark, but actually it's super light. So I just took that and I went on the inner corner here and that's trying not to get eyeshadow everywhere, but that's the look today. Is it flashy? Yeah, that's the point. Sometimes I want to look like a peacock, okay? And so this is this color here. They're beautiful together. They're beautiful separate. This is a nice light green. It has more yellow to it. It doesn't have as much brown, so it's not as intense. And this here, this trio, yeah, I would buy this as a little trio of eyeshadow. I could wear this on the inner corner for brightness, but I like that this emerald color here, yeah, it's not too dark. It has like that gold yellow quality to it. So honestly, sometimes I wear them separately or sometimes I wear them together. Either way, I'm having a good time. All right, next up is my second latest acquisition in the blue eyeshadow category. And this is from Violette FR. She has these liquid eyeshadows. These are called Zure Paint, so basically like eye paint. And she has matte or satin finishes. I have both, but this one here is called Ciel de Nuit or Ciel Nuit. And that's basically like night sky. This is a super dark navy. And this is the wand applicator. I like it, but I prefer the Armani wand. Like if I could swap out the wand, I would use the Armani one. And this, what I like to do is just do like a nice little cat wing eye with the wand because it is thin enough that you can do a little wing and then clean it up with a, a Q-tip if you need. It is so pretty and it is so intense. So this is the swatch here. It dries down completely matte but it is this very intense blue. And it's so pretty. I just find that it's nice as a liner. I haven't used it as like a full eyeshadow look. I could, it would be very intense. I would probably mix it up with something lighter for a smoky eye. But as a liner, it's so nice because it's this super dark navy. And so it looks, it's just so flattering because it's a little bit less intense than a super dark jet black. But at the same time, it's just so beautiful. And it kind of brings people in because it doesn't exactly look black. It just sort of looks mysterious and just super beautiful. And this is not that new, but it's new to me. I'm very happy to get it. Another single here is from Sisley, and this is Silky French Blue. Fun fact, if I were a drag queen, my drag queen name would be Silky French Blue. And this is a beautiful formula. This is the type of eyeshadow that looks like you're wearing three or four at once because it has this satin finish, not glittery, not, you know, like too garish. It just has this reflective quality to it that makes it look 
like you're wearing multiple shadows. You know, it's not as intense as the Charlotte Tilbury. It's not as matte and dark as Violette FR, but depending on the light, it has a beautiful soft satin finish, almost like a satin glow. And so you can wear just this. You can get away with wearing only this if you need to. It's really, pu really pretty, really beautiful. And it's great as a single. Sometimes you don't wanna buy a whole palette. You can get away with just buying a single. All right, moving on to my heftiest eyeshadow palette. This is Olivia Palermo. And this is the Eau Naturelle palette. It, it's so heavy. Like if you have not experienced Olivia Palermo, it is the heaviest makeup on the market so far that I've tried. So this palette looks like a very, don't wanna say basic, but slightly basic neutral palette, except for this beautiful center shade, which clearly has been dug into, but the rest of the palette is really nice if you want something light and neutral, but if you want a blue, she's got a blue for you. And this is really pretty, you know, it's a bit more intense in the shimmer than the Sisley one. It has more sparkle to it but it is very, very pretty. You could mix these two together. You could mix these two together very nicely. It's just really nice and very, it's light. You know, it's not too, too dark. It's very pretty, very blue. All right, moving on to some Dior. We have here this palette called Blue Beat. This came out, I think it was a spring for a few years ago, like 2017, 2018, I don't know, something like that. I liked this palette, but I didn't love it. It's very pastel but it's not very intense. I still have my Violette Affaire liquid liner here that I can't quite get off, but uh, yeah, so this is Blue Beat. It's pretty, I don't know, it just wasn't like wow. I'm still looking at it now and I'm not very wowed. It was fine, not great. You know, like I liked it probably because it was blue and green and I'm always going to have a slight affinity for those shades, but I don't know, something about it, meh, could be better. Moving on to, ugh. 007 party in colors this honestly is one of my favorite palettes ever especially from the brand dior because this was a holiday release 2019 and this is party in colors it's very festive it's giving me new year's eve every single color is this intense satin finish and these two colors the blue and the green are basically like the charlotte tilbury pop rocks where they're just this like intense duochrome multi-finish beautiful colors very very pretty just super intense in the shine in the finish in the colors and i don't know if it's picking up on camera but i swear that like this blue has like a purple reflection depending on the light the green is really really pretty it has like a bit of yellow and gold and i loved um also this purple pink color too just the whole palette i loved party in colors it really was party in colors. Moving on to denim. Now this I think is probably the best palette to get on the market. If you want a blue green palette, I would get this one. Like if you just want to get one palette, not a bunch of singles, get denim. It's really what blue eyeshadow dreams are made of. There is this one that's a bit more green. It's just so pretty. I love how intense this blue is. I, I just love the whole palette. Give me a second here. Here is a denim. So we have this light blue. We have this one here that's like a teal and then goes a bit into the greens. We have this dark navy blue that has a bit of violet in it as well. It's just so pretty. And there is like a center gold shadow that we're not going to swatch because that is not the purpose of today's video. But yeah, denim is the one for you if you want just one palette. It's super pretty. The quality of these shadows is so nice, especially the new formula. Like the first one here, um, this one was an older formula for the brand. Anything new from like 2021, I would say, is great from Dior. The new formula for eyeshadows is phenomenal. My desk is covered in eyeshadow, but I'll clean that up in a second. Um, so next up from Dior as well is Dive. So when did this come out? I think this was a summer release. It kind of looks like spring summer to me and we have these two here i think i liked it but again it wasn't amazing this is before the reformulation so these were fine but not as spectacular and yeah if you want to get a blue palette get denim in my opinion 
these two here i obviously like how light and flashy that blue is but something about the formula the finish the texture everything it's just not as great as denim so even though i like how bright and flashy it is it is not an improvement of this formula here it's fine but yeah what was it called again dive i think this was supposed to come out for 2021 or 2020 wasn't it supposed to be for like the olympics or something I don't know, maybe. I could be making up stories, but I think it was supposed to be a summer release for some sort of Olympics, maybe. Okay, let's switch over to Shannon, and this is Quiet Revolution. So this is just matte, and this is Lucia Pica, and we talked about, you know, dark matte before from Lucia Pica and the Nine Shadow Palette. This is what it led to, Quiet Revolution. So this one here is a super intense, dark matte and this one here is a bit brighter but the fact that it's matte like they're both matte it's not that they're harder to work well they are a little bit harder to work with because dark mattes are just not very forgiving you don't have as much wiggle room so this is beautiful though maybe i should wear this more often hmm, quite revolution i like this one but i would wear maybe something else something a bit brighter but wow i'm looking at this now i'm like hmm this is really pretty it's very bright but like i stated it is matte so it's just not as forgiving it's just not going to be as easy to work with but i still like quiet revolution i just haven't worn it in a while but i may have to change that back over to dior with blue velvet this came out mm, was it last year or the year before it was a limited edition color my nail polish sort of matches the center shade here and this was a velvety collection there was like four colors to choose from wasn't there like a paisley coral as well they just sort of had like more matte varieties and these are nice but they're it's just a bit more intense the options here are more matte which tends to be harder to work with and just especially like i don't know like they're just not as easy if you're not super experienced with shadows you can tell like they're just really dark and intense i like this it's just not my go-to blue if I have to choose a blue palette, I'm going to go with denim, almost always. And I do like this one here especially. It's really light. It's, you know, it's giving me almost like a lavender reflection, like a violet. It's very pretty, but these are just very dark and intense. Now we're back to Chanel with Road Movie. Wow, this is like Lucia Pica deep cuts here when she first started with the brand. This is Road Movie. I think this is when she went to Florida and was inspired by the nature around florida i don't remember exactly i remember she went to florida once and was inspired by everything but this may be this palette here so it's green and blue i like this one i like the brightness you can always tell which color i'm going to like more when it's brighter and just more fun this is nice but it's just it's really dark and can look really heavy on me this one is blue but with like a green in it is this a teal just a really nice teal color Moving on to Chanel's Tissé Vénitien. Uh, this palette has been well-loved. This is the mirror. It became unglued. How charming is that? This is what the palette looks like with the glue up here. And when this came out... Yeah, that just happened. Okay, well, when this came out, people lost their minds. The marketing for this was everywhere. Okay, this is still solid. I'm just gonna push it back lightly, tap it lightly. Get a swatch and then maybe put it back in the drawer where it lives okay let's put you back there uh so this is tissé venicia it looks it looks like road movie i never compared these uh, side by side but it looks like a less satiny version of or like tissé venicia is more satiny than road movie huh interesting i guess they went back to you know some backups to create this i never it this never crossed my mind before but when tc venetian came out everyone was obsessed with like the marketing campaign because it did look really gorgeous and it is a beautiful palette if it's still um put together not falling apart at the seams it's totally discontinued i would have to go somewhere on ebay and i don't know i'm not gonna repurchase it i'm just gonna enjoy it in its shattered form all right, I have two palettes left and my desk is covered in eyeshadow. So about time we wrap this up. Here we have our Guerlain category. I only have two palettes from Guerlain. 
and they're both blue and green. This is Mystic Peacock. This is permanent, part of the permanent collection, came out mm, last year, and we have this super beautiful bright cobalt blue, and then we have this more satiny color here. Let's go ahead and give these a swatch. Super pretty, and you can sort of see that having a brighter color with a more satiny finish is something that we are seeing repeated across the board here. But this one here, this blue, it's really nice. It's like this rich cobalt blue. And this is more green with gold. It has a lot of shift. It's very, very pretty. And then last but not least, we have my latest acquisition here. I think this and the Violette FR are the last two eyeshadows that I purchased. And this is the Summer Jean eyeshadow palette. This is a work of art. Literally, if you can look up close, you can see textures. It looks like the bumblebees are stitched and quilted onto actual denim. Love the palette, Summer Jean. And this is the palette here. So pretty. This mixed with this gives a blurple. I'm gonna call it blurple. It's like pink, purple, blue, violet, just absolutely stunning. I love this palette so much. I have one clean finger, great. If you compare these side by side, you can see that the Butterfly palette has a bit more brightness to it. The Mystic Peacock is a bit darker here. So here we have the Butterfly palette. I swatched the Blurple together just to show you how pretty it is. And it does look close, very close to Mystic Peacock. But when I reviewed Butterfly, I definitely, I don't know if it's just from having makeup remover on me, all the time, but when I swatched Mystic Peacock and Butterfly, the two blues, they kind of looked closer together, but here they look a little bit different. But anyway, I love Butterfly. Mm. If I was gonna get one palette from Guerlain, I would get Butterfly over Mystic Peacock. Butterfly is limited edition, and I just like the blurple combination, honestly. I just think it's cuter, I think it's lighter, I think it's fresher, and this is it. These are all of my blue and green eyeshadows. I have quite a lot and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the swatches. Let me know, are you a khaki green type of girl? Are you a blurple type of girl? Are you like a mint seafoam green type of girl? If you've made it this far into the video, you know the drill. Leave a little green or blue heart emoji to let me know you've made it this far into the video. I always appreciate that. And I think that's all I have for you guys for today. So thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.